Oh, you always know. Listen, I understand the weekend's coming. We got football. We got a Kings game tomorrow night. Uh, okay, okay. We got football, you know, <laughs> things that are positive. The weekend, Halloween's coming up, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and I don't know if uh, that's part of the reason we love talking to Greg Papa so much or if Greg Papa is just really the official kickoff. Yeah, he gets our weekend started. He absolutely does. He joins us right now. Good morning, Greg. How are you? Don't be picking on Mike Brown, though. He's our friend. He may ride in on a Harley on you guys. I know, a little bit of a slow start. You almost got the game against the Warriors on Sunday, though. I was impressed. They took, the, they took their foot off the, the gas. Comeback. They took their foot the off. Warriors did? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Uh, maybe a little bit. What, are you missing their last 12 shots? Yeah. They their foot off the gas. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the big headline this week is that Kyle Shanahan opened up the whole playbook for Christian McCaffrey. I thought that was a funny headline because imagine, like, I, he just showed him, like, the table of contents last week and <laughs> the first page and, like, held it from him. But it, it is – to you, it is – how big of a difference will that make against these Rams, in your opinion? Well, he's a dynamic player. I mean, they gave up quite a bit in draft capital to get him. Um, last week, I spoke to Kyle yesterday uh, – Kyle did not anticipate playing him at all. When they made the trade, uh, it went down at about 8 o'clock on Thursday night last week, and Kyle was working on, on red zone. He didn't even you know talk to Christian until he was done at about 9 o'clock. And he said, there's no – John Lynch said, would, would you play him on Sunday? And he said, no. He's going to get here tomorrow. I'm not going to you know, not allow him to practice, really, and then play. So, But then Christian got on the phone and said, I want to play I practiced Wednesday and Thursday in Carolina. It's like a road game. I'm just getting on an airplane on Friday, and I'm, I'm going to play. So they gave him a menu of plays. They, they gave it to him on uh, Thursday right away, and then he, he didn't do much Friday. Saturday, he went through the walkthrough, and he looked fine at the walkthrough, and they actually gave him more on game day. They kind of improvised some plays. But now, I don't know if they'll start the game. Um, you can see Jeff Wilson Jr. and Christian together you know, what they call a rocket formation where you have two halfbacks in the game simultaneously. I think you'll see that quite a bit with one of the guys playing up at fullback, probably Wilson. But um, he's going to play. I mean, in Carolina, he played 85% of the snaps. He's well-conditioned. He doesn't have any injury. He has more. Uh, it's just the, the personnel. Last week, they, uh, what did he get, 22 snaps? Uh, none were on third down. Kyle was not, he was not comfortable, you know, just in case Jimmy had a check to a certain protection that he would just get the terminology. He just may not know it. So that was the one thing. They didn't want to play him on third down, but he's playing on third down. This guy's a three down, a four down back. So I think it'll be like the Christian McCaffrey to play for Carolina. In fact, his last game as a Panther, October the 16th, was against the Rams. And he had 89 yards receiving and 69 yards rushing and now, he had a vicious stiff arm on their linebacker, Ernest Jones, and took one down the sideline for about 50 yards. It's kind of odd just watching, you know, the 49, a new player. I'm watching the Rams defense, and I'm watching Christian McCaffrey uh, snap after snap play against them. It's just odd. There was a, a situation a couple of years ago with Emmanuel Sanders where he played against Green Bay earlier in the year. But I that was just weird to see McCaffrey against the Rams, and he, he played a lot, so... They just saw the guy, and um, yeah, he's going to play. He's going to play a lot. He's got enough plays now to uh, play the whole game, just about 85 or 90 snaps probably. Talking with Greg Pop again. All guests come to you from the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. I agree, Greg. I thought, I thought McCaffrey looked great in the reps he got. Um, they did get Bosa back. They did get Williams back last week. But what about some of the other guys that are still banged up? Uh, anybody else coming back, you think, uh, this week for Sunday? Well, Jason Verrett, Jason was activated off pop, uh, physically unable to perform list. And I, I hate being on that list at my age. I'm, I'm, yeah. just, I'm never activated off that list. <laughs> um, so he may, he may mix in, but uh, he's had, you know, three ACL tears, two on that knee, a ruptured Achilles tendon. He's had terrible injuries. So he's, he's in the mix. I'm not sure if he'll go. I think the big thing is Traverius Ward looks much better on the practice field this week. He was not himself last week, and he did not practice Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I keep saying it's, 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 he likes to be known as Mooney, Mooney Man. But is Mooney playing on Sunday? I haven't seen him all week. He's in the, he's in the uh, performance staff. He's, in, he's inside the uh, conditioning room and rehab. And they say he's playing, he's playing, he's playing. But then, you know, Saturday at the walkthrough, he got out there, but I thought he hadn't taken any reps all week. And then he didn't look like himself. And Kansas City targeted him. 
I don't know if they knew he was limited coming back from the injury or that he was a chief for four years and they know his strengths and they also know his weaknesses. So they went at him. And one of the biggest plays in the game is that third and 11 and 12, Marcellus Valdez scambling ran right by him on a post route. And I don't know if he, I think he thought he had help inside, but he was not prepared to run with him. And, and Valdez scambling is one of the fastest players in the NFL. So he did not play well at all. He didn't tackle well. All those jet sweeps, not all of them, but a lot of them were to, to his side. I think the big thing is that Charvarius Ward is going to be more like himself in this game. He looked like he was moving well. And the Rams are getting Van Jefferson back for this game. They're a great wide receiver. They're their fast guy. They're Beldad Scandling to go along with Cooper Cup and Allen Robinson and their underrated tight end Tyler Higby. So I think the big thing is just getting Charvarius Ward back and up to speed where he's playing like himself again. Greg Pop joining us. Greg, there's a graphic making the rounds. You see this every once in a while. Someone will come up with a stat. Here we go. I think it's uh, Kyle Shanahan when trailing uh, going into the fourth is one in 30 as uh, as a head coach of the Niners. When you see stuff like that, listen, 31 games is a rather large sample size. Uh, but do you historically, can you read something into that? Or is that just a case of a stat being a stat? Well, that's a stat that is specific to one juncture in the game. Um, I mean, how about the New Orleans game when the 49ers were, were they behind or tied when they ran the fourth and two on the outcut to George Kittle and they got down there to kick a field goal? Uh, the Rams game, uh, 2019, uh, it was at least tied or not, uh, fell behind. I remember they had to convert a, a pair of third and 16s. One to Kendrick Bourne, one to Emmanuel Sanders, and Robbie Gold made a field goal at the end. Um, so you're, you're saying the 49ers are incapable of generating offense in the fourth quarter, and, um, whether it's a tight game or not. I mean, it, there's also a stat that Sean McVay has lost one game in his career when trailing at halftime. Well, the one game that he lost was January the 9th last year when the 49ers came from 17 nothing down and 17-3 down to win that game, and he kind of mismanaged that game. So if you want to tell a story, you could dig up a stat. It is, it is, I'm not saying it's not alarming. I think the bigger issue this year, just overall, has been their lack of offense in the second half of games, specifically the third quarter in games. Um, they, they do well early in the game with the openers, the scripted plays. But I know Kyle re script. So to start the game, and Bill Walsh had the script of, of 15 plays. He's the one that kind of started it in the NFL. Then you, you rehearse the first 15. Kyle calls them the openers. The 49ers have 24 plays where they do that. And it's 12 runs, 12 passes. And then he calls. They go to Saturday walkthrough, and they run through the plays. and They rehearse them. They know what they all are. And the 49ers, like, you know, they came out and led this game against the Chiefs 10 to nothing. And, uh, and then at a field goal later, they were up 13 to 7. So the first three drives, they went field goal, touchdown, field goal. Um, the 49ers, what Kyle likes to do is win the flip of the coin, defer, get the ball to start the second half, and hopefully have the ball at the end of the first half. He calls it lapping the opponents. You get two straight possessions. The 49ers, historically, Dave, have been really good coming out to start the third quarter um, and, and scoring if they can before half, but they re-script at halftime and he goes to eight plays for the second half, four runs, four passes. And then he, they, they have a plan coming out like they do with the openers. They, they have not been successful on that third quarter script for whatever reason. So look at the numbers in the third quarter. I mean, why are the Warriors the Warriors? Because step happens in the third quarter. They strangle you. So um, I think the fourth quarter is something that's a little misleading because I can recall a number of games where they, they won in the fourth quarter. But I think the, the other part of it is where you make your adjustments at halftime. The, the 49ers are having a bad time this year in the third quarter. They're being outscored decidedly in the third quarter. And overall, they've not been a very good offense in the second half. Greg, I think traditionally when the Niners have played at SoFi, uh, there's been a ton of San Francisco 49ers fans there. You anticipate more of that on Sunday? Yeah, I have to get the breakdown. I, but the one thing is the Rams are cognizant of that, obviously, so they're bracing. Um, January the 9th, and we went there, Jason, for the last game of the year, and the 49ers had to win that game to make the playoffs. It was a sea of red. And I get a lot of Raider games, and we went down to San Diego to play the Chargers, and the Raiders would just take over Mission Valley. It was incredible. You know, I and even like the new place in Carson, the Stubhub Center. I remember Philip Rivers getting booed 
when he took the field. It was supposed to be his home stadium, and they had to go to a silent count the whole game. Uh, Stafford wasn't booed, but it was they had to go silent count. So that January 9th game completely helped the 49ers win and get in. The January 30th game, the NFC Championship game, which is three weeks later, the, the Rams and their, you know, Marvin Demoff, their, their president, um, you know, their whole bunch there were so, so cognizant of Kevin Demoff, Marvin's his dad, the former agent. Um, they, they just didn't want it to happen. So I think that game was more 50-50. But there was a point in the game, 49ers, you know, led that game the whole game. It was 17-7 to going to the fourth quarter. Cooper Cup scored in the first play of the fourth quarter to make it tight. Then when they, right around that point or when the 49ers took the lead, I remember there was the 49ers had a hard time having the offense function. Uh, Kyle Juszczyk, I think, false started. There was a delay of game where they were moving late. And all of a sudden, they did something in that stadium with the, the matrix board, the, the, the ribbon board, where it all went blue at the same time. And they, Seattle was known for years for pump, piping in some kind of crowd effect and just cranking the decibel meter. All of a sudden, it got loud as hell. And it got blue. I'm like, where did all the red fans go? They just evaporated. Everybody hears where it blue. And now all of a sudden I can't hear anything. And we got the ball and they false start or delay a game or something. It was like, so the Rams ownership, they're embarrassed. I mean, that's Cronkies Canyon. That's his, that's his palace. They had the Super Bowl there. The 49ers have won that NFC championship game. They would have played in the Super Bowl in San Cronkies Canyon Palace. They would have gone nuts. So they did something. With the, 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 the visual, the audio, just a complete assault on the senses all at once. And then I, I it flipped the game. And I think they'll, they'll I'm, I'm sure they're going to have the same kind of plan for this game. This is not the winner goes to the Super Bowl, but do we not feel that the, the winner of this game on Sunday at least has the inside track, the pole position for winning the NFC West this year? I do. Yeah, I would agree. And uh, hopefully we will, as always, hear many, many. A touchdown 49ers, touchdown San Francisco's, excuse me. Uh, maybe this, touchdown CMC. There you yes. CMC. Yeah. We'll hear about maybe, five maybe. of those. We'll that, see. We'll see. We'll see. Have a wonderful call. Good luck. And uh, hopefully we're talking uh, and very happy next Friday at 8 o'clock. Thank you. Yeah. Buddy. Big, yeah. big difference going into the bye after four and four. Mm-hmm. Beat the Rams twice versus three and five and split with the Rams. So Sunday is, is ginormous. Getting close to Gucci Dada cookie season, buddy. We are, we are, isn't it? I thought about that last night. I got to get you a Halloween day. I bought, the, I, I bought the candy way too early. Yeah, you I'm did. I'm going through bags of Butterfingers. Don't do I'm it. Take that thing. Oh, <laughs> Have Kill a good me. weekend.